Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. Please note all of your lines have been muted to reduce any background noise, and we hope you take full advantage of the question and answer pod on the left side of your screen to ask any questions throughout the presentation. If we are unable to get to your questions, our team will follow up with you offline. This webcast is being recorded and a link will be sent out in a follow-up email for you to view it again or share with a colleague. On behalf of Conducive Technologies, Not Technology Solutions, and CareSoft, I would like to welcome you to today's webcast, Improving Performance in Virtualized Environments. Before I introduce today's speakers, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about CareSoft. CareSoft is a trusted IT solutions provider delivering industry-leading technology products, services, and trainings to federal, state, local, and education customers on behalf of top-tier manufacturers like Conducive, Red Hat, Adobe, and VMware. We are happy to be partnering with Conducive Technologies and Not Technology Solutions today to bring you this webinar on boosting your VM performance and look forward to building this partnership with more events in the future. Our contact information will be at the end of the presentation, so please don't hesitate to contact us for any of your needs. At this time, I'd like to introduce our speakers for today's webcast. Dan Sullivan, Regional Vice President of Conducive Technologies. Gary Kwan, Senior Vice President, Product Strategist at Conducive Technologies. And Shannon Davis, Partner Manager at Not, Not Technology Solutions. Shannon, the floor is all yours. Thank you so much, Taylor, and good afternoon. Hi again, my name is Shannon Davis, and I work as the partner manager here at Not Technology Solutions. And just want to take a moment to uh, let you know what KTS is about. Um, we are a woman-owned small business that provides leading-edge information technology products and services. We are committed to providing quality solutions at the best value while offering unparceled customer service. We accomplish this in partnership with Kerasoft and best-in-class manufacturers like Conducive. Um, now I'd like to turn over to our experts at Conducive, Dan and Gary. Hey, Santa, thanks very much. Um, so this is Dan Sullivan speaking. Uh, and as Taylor mentioned, and Taylor, thank you, too, for the opportunity to be here uh, and speak, uh, speak with you. Uh, we also have joining uh, me from the Conducive technology side is, is Gary Kwan, uh, otherwise known as GQ. Uh, as Taylor mentioned, he's our Senior Vice President of Technology Strategy, and uh, folks, he also keeps me honest in any technical discussion. So GQ, you out there? I'm here, Dan, and that's why you need a tech guy on here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, GQ, I appreciate it. Uh, and again, as Taylor mentioned, please don't hesitate to uh, type any questions you may have in the question and answer box there up on the left. Um, GQ and I um, look forward to an interactive session, and so, uh, you know, we look forward to your questions. No questions, a bad one. Put this little agenda together for us today. We've certainly gotten through our introductions, uh, so let's just jump right into the technology discussion. I uh, wanted to introduce you to Conducive. You may, you may know us from a past life. Uh, so we were uh, previously uh, the Disk Keeper Corporation. Um, we've been in business over 37 years. And GQ, how many of those years have you been with uh, Conducive slash Disk Keeper? Just 34, Dan. I wasn't here the first year. <laughs> uh, just a short stint, GQ. Well, uh, thanks for your and all your team's efforts over those decades. Certainly appreciate it. Um, so again, folks, we were the Disk Keeper Corporation, and you may have noticed uh, by that world-leading software uh, that GQ and his team put together. But uh, while it was the preeminent disk defragmentation software product, you know, in 2012, the world changed dramatically with the advent of virtualization. Um, you no longer defrag a SAN or an SSD. And so GQ and his team totally respun the software to where now uh, there, there are two patented filter drivers that sit in the, in the guest OS uh, or on a physical server, uh, but we are speaking about virtualized environments today, though it's applicable for both. 
Uh, and, and instead of, you know, D, then fragmentation. caching engine that we'll talk about, but those, those two patented filter drivers to reduce I.O. at least 30% to your back-end storage, which in return, our customers are seeing anywhere from 50 to 300% or more application performance improvement on their existing hardware, even in all flash environments, and we'll talk about that uh, during the presentation. Because of those kinds of results, Gartner named us a cool vendor and said we should be installed in every virtualized initiative. Uh, the folks you see here, HP, Dell, Lenovo, Western Digital, uh, they actually OEM that caching engine that I mentioned that we'll talk about. And they put it in their workbooks and laptops. Uh, they have their own caching engines, but the, but the caching engine that GQ and his team developed is so intelligent uh, that it's it's better and more efficient than what they have, and you can appreciate the testing that they went through to put their name on it and put it into their products. Because of where we play in the Microsoft space, we're a close partner with Microsoft. Because of what we do in virtualization, we're a close partner with VMware, and we'll talk about that. Uh, and just as an aside, while we're talking about virtualized environments, and most people these days are virtualizing their SQL environments, and SQL is a very a uh, big opportunity area for us to help improve performance. GQ and his team recently certified under this new certification, the Microsoft SQL Server, Server IO Reliability Certification. GQ, you want to speak about that? Sure, thanks, Dan. I consider this a nice elite certification. Microsoft has certain types of programs to make sure that your product is fully compatible with their product, and in this case, SQL Server. Now, I should note that we're the only software vendor to get this certification, but we're in good company with people like Dell, EMC, HP. So it's a nice uh, accolade for us. Now, not only did we have to go through stringent certification tests, we also had to go against a board of SQL experts. and. Passing that really showed how well we work and fully compatible with SQL Server, Dan. Yeah, congratulations, GQ, and, uh, and well done there. So appreciate that. So, folks, that's really all I'm going to talk about relative to who Conducive is. And I'm going to jump right now into the technology and, and how we improve performance in virtualized environments. So, folks, this, uh, this depicts really the most uh, uh, efficient I.O. environment possible. And what you'd like to see are large contiguous writes emanating out of the Windows OS, moving down to the hypervisor, and back again. Uh, and while you know that, you know, the virtualization has been great for server efficiency, unfortunately, it's been horrendous for I.O. performance. Because what it does to this most efficient I.O. environment that you see here is the following. There are two inefficiencies that enter into the into a play here um, as soon as you virtualize, and that's both the Windows I/O tax and the I/O blender effect. And while I can continue on here to talk about these, I'm going to turn this over to GQ to to give you a little update as to what happens here. And and Dan, I'll get get into how this occurs, but let me just point out. There's the overhead of having to handle all these small random IOs. But there, it's also causing a performance degradation at the storage level. Because when you, when you get storage, they always give you two benchmarks. The vendors do. They give you a benchmark for random IO access and sequential IO access. And you'll notice that the sequential I.O. access always outperforms the random I.O. access. So if we can enforce nice sequential I.O. going down to the storage, and which is shown in the first, uh, the first picture that Dan showed, you're going to get the best performance out of your storage. But as Dan indicates, that's not what occurs. 
And what happens is this. One is this term we, we uh, call the Windows I.O. tax. And that happens on the virtual machines running Windows. And that's because on the Windows file system, when a file gets created or extended, it doesn't know how big that file is going to be, either extension or creation. So it just looks, and this is all on the logical level, it just looks for the next allocation. And usually that next allocation isn't big enough to contain that creation or extension. So then they had to find another allocation and so forth and so forth. Well, each of those allocations is an extra I.O. So rather than trying to write that file out in a nice sequential I.O., it happens to write out in all these smaller random I.O.s. And then you, you have more than usually people have more than one VM on the hypervisor. So then you have all these random IOs coming down the hypervisor and they don't, they will then get so-called split apart. They won't ha be handled in the correct order. So you have this random processing of all the IO, which is called this IO blender effect. So not only are you hurting the performance of storage, you also have that extra IO or overhead of trying to process all these random IOs. And later on, we'll show you how we solve this issue. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, thank you, GQ. So in this case, folks, if you're trying to write a gigabyte of data, it might take 100,000 IOs here because of all of this randomness that occurs. In this example, where we provide you, and this is using our software, provide you with the most efficient I.O. possible, it may take only 50 or 60,000 I.O.s. So you can appreciate it. You could take out almost half of the I.O.s in your environment down to storage and back again, what that might do around improving performance, allowing you to add more applications to your existing infrastructure without having to add more expensive hardware, and extending the life of your existing hardware. So those are actually the three value propositions that our patented I.O. reduction software delivers. And it doesn't matter here whether you've got all flash, hyperconverged, et cetera, on the back end. It has to deal with all this unnecessary random small I.O. I pulled out from uh, VMware's best practices guide uh, how, what they talk about around improving I.O. performance. And this is right out of the you know, 6.5 vSphere best practices guide. Two ways to improve I.O. performance. One, obviously increase machine memory, uh, and that makes total sense. But the second is, is as VMware says, defrag the file system on all guests. Well, as we, we spoke about before, you don't defrag an SSD or a SAN. We're the only one in the, sitting in the Windows OS, preventing fragmentation from occurring at the outset. So by inference, VMware is saying, you really need us in your virtualized environment because we're the ones preventing the fragmentation from occurring. And by the way, this, this, these two items are mentioned 17 times uh, in this best practices guide. So where do we sit? As I mentioned, we're two light filter drivers, so we're this orange little stripe here in the OS. And so we sit uh, above everything else in your environment, hypervisor, servers, HVAs, network, storage, et cetera. So folks, if it's compatible with Windows, it's compatible with us. Uh, so again, uh, it doesn't matter where, what else is in your environment, uh, as long as it's Windows, uh, we'll be there optimizing the I.O. stream down to storage and back again. GQ, any comments here? No, I think you hit the most important thing, Dan, in that we're agnostic to the type of hypervisor you're using or the type of storage. As Dan indicated, if it already works with Windows, it'll still work with us. It's still a Windows I.O. coming through. Just You might just think of it, it's a optimized Windows I.O. now. Thanks, Dan.
Thanks, GQ. Yep. So folks, just kind of, uh, you know, to, to summarize here about what Velocity does, as we mentioned, large contiguous rights carrying more payload in every I.O. operation. We use idle DRAM, and we'll talk about this, for that patented caching engine, and DRAM is 10 to 15 times faster than flash. So with any read-intensive environments uh, and having available DRAM to use, and by the way, that caching engine that GQ's team developed, it's fully automated. There is nothing for any, for any of you to do. It just starts uh, understanding what IOs are performance degrading and, and will cache those. Uh, it's just amazing how it works. We'll share with you the dashboard that GQ and his team developed that shows you actually what this software is, is doing. Uh, GQ and his team, they had, they had trademarked the uh, set it and forget it moniker. We beat the Ronco chicken guy to that because we all just run in the background. I mentioned it's fully automated. Uh, so it were truly set and forget it software. So the dashboard was developed to help show you what it is we do. And we guarantee to solve your toughest performance, you know, or your money back. So what's new in our latest releases? This is pretty amazing, folks. You can ins now install our software into the OS without a reboot being required. I had a customer tell me even last week that he was stunned because he said he even had to reboot his server to install a print driver. So GQ and his team have been working for years to accomplish this, and they, and they did it. Uh, and it's been out since April and not an issue whatsoever. Healthcare institutions and others updating on the fly. We talked about the dashboard. It's been updated since the previous release. Um, we have alerts built into the software to, to help you tune memory to get the best performance. We have a, a velocity management console that we'll share a picture of with you to give you a single pane view for all of the uh, VMs in your environment so you can see what's happening relative to memory utilization. And I just wanted to share with you this quote uh, from Blake Smith. Uh, Christus Health is one of the largest healthcare institutions in the state of Texas. They've been using this for years. GQ is very involved with them. But you can see what Blake had to say about upgrading and installing uh, Velocity using the no reboot feature across his 2,700 uh, virtual machines, which they use us on now. So very impressive what it is, GQ, that you and your team have accomplished, especially with that no reboot. So that means, folks, you can, inst you can install us in 10 minutes we start optimizing immediately, and you'll see the results in the dashboard in the day or two. Pretty simple, pretty amazing. So GQ, this is a picture of, of what a, a typical dashboard looks like. You want to walk the folks through this? Sure, Dan. And, you know, as Dan indicated, we had to add this dashboard to show people exactly what we're doing there, how we're providing the uh, performance gains. and as indicated, we are eliminating IOs from having to go to the storage. Now, with the read IOs, we're doing the caching. So because, uh, with that, we'll be able to satisfy the cache right there. And the write IOs, instead of a whole bunch of random IOs, we're, uh, we're doing nice sequential IOs, so we're reducing the number of write IOs that have to go to storage. Now, in this case here, this shows you just for the last three weeks on this system, uh, how many IOs we've eliminated have to go in storage. And that is uh, close to 10 million IOs here. And in this case, 64% uh, of them are read and 32% are writes. Now, what we also indicate too is the storage IO time saved. Because we're a filter driver, we know the latency times of the IOs. So we know if we eliminate that, that IO, how much IO time is being saved. Now, remember I said IO time, not absolute time, because you may have a lot of IOs that are happening in parallel. So by eliminating those, we saved that much IO time. Of course, there are the fragments prevented and the free spaces getting consolidated too. So this actually shows what is happening on your system. 
And then there's another view of showing, you know, the latency times, how much memory is being used. And in this local dashboard, it will also show up in red if there's not enough memory to be used. And as Dan indicated, I'll get into it a little more, we'll only use memory that's available, not being used by the system. And if there's not enough in there, we'll show that in red. And that just indicates you're not really getting the advantage of this IntelliMemory technology because there's not enough available memory for us to use for the caching. And then the total workload, how much workload we've actually helped increase on this system here. And that's the data being written in and read from the storage. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, GQ. And, and we talked about having a single pane of glass to view uh, all of the VMs that were installed on, along with some memory tuning advice. Uh, and this is what a sample of what the velocity management console looks at looks like. So each of these VMs here could really are really depicted in the two screens you saw previously. So you can drill into each one individually and get a lot more data about what's going on with that particular VM. But again, through the console, you can look at your entire environment. And again, Christus has us on 2,700 VMs and using the VMC to monitor all of them. But GQ's built in uh, a number of different items here to help you manage your environment. One is a system status. He mentioned different colors appearing based on memory utilization. So you can see the top ones are all green, meaning it's, it's identifying that they have enough memory and working fine. The yellow, as you say, when you hover over it, you'll get an alert. And in most cases or not, it's all about memory. It happens to say if we had a little more memory, we could do a better job on this VM. And this one here in red just basically says there's not enough memory here in, for us to even build the cache. We could benefit this VM, just give us a little more memory. And then across the top here, you can see that we'll show the workload per VM, the number of reads and writes eliminated, uh, min max and average cast size, and then the total IOs being eliminated. So a great tool for you to, to manage your entire environment. And by the, by the way, you'd also use the console to install a velocity very easily and simply in your environment. So what are the two patented filter drivers that we have? GQ, I'll let you talk about this and all the work you've done over the decades here with IntelliWrite and IntelliMemory. Thanks, Dan. And, and this first one uh, is called IntelliWrite. And as I indicated before, the Windows file system tends to break, break up I.O. when it writes out data into small random I.O. And I like to take this analogy and if you're going to carry a gallon of water from one place to another, would you rather do it in 100 Dixie cups or just one big gallon bucket and do it all at one time? And that's really what we're trying to enforce here. And it's really a very, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you must be caching all these small writes and then writing them out. No, we're not, we're not doing that because that in itself is not very safe because if you're doing right caching and something the system goes down there's some te data integrity errors so we're not doing that we're actually doing something simpler and much safer we're actually mining the system in the background and we know when certain applications or certain file types when they get created or extended they're going to be so big and we feed that intelligence back to the windows file system. So when a file gets created or extended, rather than looking for the next allocation, it looks for the best fit allocation. So it can write all that data in one big contiguous I.O. Thanks, Dan. And that's, that's that technology. And then the second technology is our IntelliMemory technology. And that's our caching technology. And as Dan indicated, Actually, nine out of the top ten OEM manufacturers actually use our technology. You haven't heard of us because 
they sell it under their own name, but they, they're using our cash technology because we're very unique at what we do here. The first thing is, as Dan indicated, is how we use memory. You don't have to go and allocate memory for us to use for caching. We're going to just dynamically use what's available on that system. And then if a system or user processor comes in and, and it needs memory, we automatically give it up so there's no, never any memory contention issues. So the first thing is dynamic use of just available unused memory. The second thing that is unique is our patented method of determining what to keep and what to put in cache to get the best performance. You know, some caching technology is basically, oh, this data was just read. Let me put it in cache. Hope that it gets read in again. But what we're doing is a little more unique because we look at two things. One is, in the background, we're seeing what data is getting access the most. So that's one criteria. The second criteria is what data, if we were to cache it, would give you the best performance. That way we use your, the amount of memory that we have available for caching to be the, uh, you know, we'll get the most out of it. And we know that it's not those long contiguous reads, but those small little reads that we call them busy I.O. that really hurt performance. So if we can keep those in the cache, you're going to get the best performance gains. And what buys you is this. I.O. operation comes in. We're located right on the VM system itself. When that I.O. request comes in, if we can satisfy it right there at that machine, we just prevented that I.O. having to go down the network to the storage to get satisfied. And the memory, even if you have all flash array, DRAM is 10 to 15 times faster than SSDs. So you're going to get that much speed increase plus the savings of the network. Now, you're not only going to get the performance of the caching, you're also freeing up that network, that bandwidth, that storage, so other systems can now perform better because they're not competing uh, to get data from that storage. So Dan, uh, that's our two main technologies in the product. Thanks, TQ. And, and folks, you know, think about it. It's really pretty simplistic what we do, and yet at the same time, it's incredibly powerful. I'm just going to share one example. Uh, this is the University of Illinois out in Ch Champaign-Urbana. We happen to be installed in their facilities and services group. It's not the big university data center, but it's a data center that manages all the work orders across the university, 50,000 students. It's amazing. They build their own furniture. They manage a power plant there. Um, and this, this application here running on this Oracle database uh, manages not only the work orders, but the card swipes of the 50,000 students and faculty in the dormitories, bookstore, food halls, et cetera. So they were a disk keeper customer. They virtualized running VMware. And they put in brand new Dell 730 servers, 768 gigabytes of RAM, and an all brand new compelling flash storage. So they were pretty happy. They, they heard about Velocity, and they said, well, you know, since we're a disk keeper customer, we'll try Velocity and see what happens. And this is the result of a 72-hour before and after benchmark that they ran. Uh, 24 hours here before Velocity was installed, and then at the end of 72 hours after Velocity had been running for a day. And look at this. On all flash, big Dell servers, before Velocity was installed, this application generated 13.9 million IOs to disk and took four hours to complete the job. 72 hours later, the 13.9 million IOs to disk went to 2.7 million. The four hours of runtime went to an hour and 15 minutes, and we processed another half a terabyte of data in that hour and 15 minutes. And as GQ was mentioning about our patented caching engine, here's the secret sauce. 
the, the number of cash hits, the number of IOs that didn't take the trip down to storage and back again delivered this kind of time savings and allowed them to process this much more data in that hour and 15 minutes. They were, they were literally blown away because they were pretty happy with their four hours of runtime. And you could say, well, that's just an ugly Oracle database. We shouldn't run it on Windows. So this is the results of us on 103 VMs in their environment. Again, before and after 72 hours. So before 1.1 million IOs to disk and six hours and 40 minutes of runtime for those 103 VMs, look at this. 72 hours later, 1.1 million went to 684,000. But the big difference in IO time, six hours and 40 minutes to two hours. They were just, again, stunned. Um, speaking to the, the IO, uh, the IT director there, Greg Landis, I, I said, you know, brand new hardware, this is great, you can sweat those assets longer. And he said, well, maybe I can, Dan, but what you've really allowed me to do with this this significant I.O. reduction is to add more applications to my existing infrastructure without having to add more expensive hardware. I, my budget is shot. I spent it all on the hardware. You've given me more headroom here. That's a real winner. And by the way, they're a case study uh, on our website. We have any number of success stories here from customers. And I won't spend any time. You can read these better than I can. But they're just some phenomenal numbers. Christmas Health, which you heard about earlier, uh, because of what we did, we allowed them to delay a $2 million PO for a NetApp upgrade because they were having performance issues. They eventually upgraded, but it was over a couple of, after a couple of years. Bell Mobility to Verizon of Canada, look at that. We reduced I.O. to their SAN by 61% for 3x faster SQL queries. Just amazing what the software that GQ and his team developed are, are doing for customers, you know, across across the world, quite frankly, folks. So we're talking about servers. We still run in desktops. Um, so if you have desktops uh, in your environment, um, we also optimize I.O. on those desktops. So we really go from the desktop to the data center with our solution. So. With that, I did want to give, share with you two, one last uh, quote here. This is from Insight Success Business Magazine, who, did a, a, who produced a, a article about the top virtual, virtualization software providers. And this is what they had to say about our software. Uh, the most important piece to me, is, I think, really, is enhancing the performance of Windows systems in the VMware environment. And I hope because of what we share with you today, you can see how by just installing us, no reboot takes 10 minutes to help improve performance, reduce I.O. to your backend storage, sweat those assets longer, allow you to use that extensive infrastructure longer, and be able to add more applications to that existing infrastructure and saving you precious budget dollars. So with that, we mentioned that by attending the seminar today, and we thank you, uh, that we will be sending everyone uh, a copy of a, of a tool that we have to allow you to assess your environment. We, it's called the I.O. Assessment Tool. It's a simple application, runs on a workstation, but it monitors 11 different key uh, I.O. metrics in your environment. All you have to do is copy uh, the addresses of the servers that you want to mention. You populate a dialog box with that. You hit start. It automatically starts at 12.01 on a Monday morning, 12.01 uh, a.m. It runs for a week. Uh, and in the next week, you can in, in, import the results to a report generator, and you'll get an incredible view uh, of what what's happening in your environment. And by the way, the servers will also be identified red, yellow, and green, with the red and yellow ones being the most, uh, the most uh, good candidates for I.O. optimization, and we're happy to walk through that report with you. In addition, uh, we are more than happy to allow you to try our software for free in your environment. Uh, again, no reboot takes just minutes to install, happy to be on the, on the call with you to, to walk through the installation. 
the longest time anything it will take is will be to download the software, as I mentioned, uh, and you'll be off to the races and seeing what what conduces patented IO reduction software can do for you. So, folks, appreciate your attention here today. GQ, uh, and, uh, any questions you've got that come across? Dan, I have a few questions here. I, I know as one person asked, where does a product get installed? Does it get installed on the host or the guest or the virtual machines itself? Our product gets installed on the guest machines running Windows. And uh, it, it will then optimize the I.O. on those Windows machines. Okay. And then right. yeah. another one asks about how safe is this caching? What happens if the system gets a power down while it's caching? And uh, and you're correct. Uh, data integrity is our number one goal here. And our caching is a read-only caching. And what that means is the data in our cache is also already on your storage. So when that data comes in and gets read, and we can satisfy it from cache, that is already on storage. So let's say you have a power outage and the system goes down. Well, there is no data integrity errors because that data has already been written out onto your storage. And then, Dan, here's a question for you. They're asking, how is this product licensed? Uh, great question. Thanks, GQ. Uh, so it's, it's very simple how, how we put together our licensing model. Uh, we're not the licensed police, uh, and we have two models. One is a host model, and by that I mean that purchasing a host license, and by the way, all of our licenses are perpetual. So you pay a one-time license fee, and then it's just maintenance uh, after that. But the host license allows you to cover all the VMs on a particular host. Uh, so whether you have 7, 10, 15, or more, they're all covered with this one host license. And we have a per-server license, which just covers a single VM, um, or if you still have physical servers in your environment, those physical servers. Um, we do recommend, though, putting us on all of the VMs on a particular host. And the, the reason for that, as you saw at the beginning of the presentation, that each VM generates this random I.O. that then gets further randomized after the hypervisor. And so by optimizing each VM, we then can provide the most uh, efficient I.O. possible uh, for the environment to deal with and reducing all of that I.O. and improving performance. So thanks, GQ. And Dan, you're right. We're not required to be installed on every VM under uh, the host, but we do recommend it. Fact is, that's where many of our sites start to see their best performance gains when they installed it on all the VMs under that host. Now, they, someone caught this one, says, you know, you're preventing fragmentation from occurring, but what about existing fragmentation that's on the system itself? And that's a good question. We actually still do defragmentation, but we're very smart on it now. Or before, we would go and just defragment the whole volume. But as data, you know, as volumes got larger and larger with so much more data being uh, put on there, that was a huge resource to try to do that. So now we go and look and see what data is actually getting hindered by performance degradation of fragmentation. And it's only those, when we see that happening, that's the day, those are the fragmentation that we will go out and reduce or make it contiguous so it doesn't happen. So we're, we've gotten very smart to only reduce fragmentation that is causing performance issues. Also, if there's large fragments, let's say you got a gigabyte file, very 
extreme case of let's say you got a gigabyte file it's in two pieces it's not going to two pieces is not going to affect performance so we're not going to waste the resources on that it's only uh, existing fragmentation that is hindering performance that will go and take care of now Dan here's another one for you they ask you know you talk you're talking about virtual systems all quite a bit what about physical systems? Do I use the same product on physical systems? Sure, GQ. So uh, we also, you know, we do have uh, the DiskKeeper server product uh, that still uh, is, has been improved uh, over the years as velocity has been improved. And it really depends what your environment is like in the breakup between physical and virtual. Uh, and we would work with you to, to optimize and pick the most appropriate uh, product and licensing model for you to use there. Uh, and GQ, one other thing I wanted to mention to the folks, and you, you're just, you were just discussing about how we work in the background. Uh, there's some other patented technologies that we won't bore you with at the time, but we won't, we really won't even show up on Task Manager because of some of them. We actually do a lot of our work. Uh, in the background from a CPU utilization standpoint. So we, we know when the CPU, CPUs are generally underutilized, and so when they're, you know, not being worked is, a lot, is when we'll do a lot of our jobs and we'll break up all of our activities into little micro jobs where we can utilize that, that CPU that's not being worked at the moment. So, again, it's, not, it's very, uh, very efficient all around. Uh, and won't impact your environment uh, from a CPU utilization standpoint either. And hey, you're right, Dan. I'm sorry, go ahead, GK. No, no, you're right. We one of our goals was to have make sure we have zero impact on the system when we're running. And although we run at lowest thread and process priority, we want to even go below that. And as Dan said, even though we're running at this lowest thread process priority, we'll, we'll take a look before we run and say, gosh, how much CPU is being used out there? Or is there any IOs on the queue that need to be processed? And if there's some things that still need to be done, we back off and let the other processes do their work first. So thanks for pointing that out, Dan. No, pretty cool. And again, it's all fully automated, folks. Everything is done in the background and or real time, but without any intervention on your part or our part. So, I mean, what could be easier? Again, just like the no reboot install. Just a truly amazing. Now, Dan, I, I do see you. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go. I, I, I do see one more question. And if any of you have any more, just write them in there. Uh, someone asked, is there any tuning that has to be done on a SQL product when you put it on there? And uh, no, there, well, I would say almost none. Uh, there is one thing that we do see on SQL Server. SQL is not very smart on how it uses available memory. SQL will tend to try to load up all its databases into the available memory and it's not very efficient in the fact that it just tries to load up everything even though a lot of those databases or parts of those databases aren't even getting accessed so we do have a best practices in those cases and that is to limit the amount of memory that SQL uses give us a little let's say you know four gigabytes and with those four gigabytes, we can do a very efficient use of that to do the caching. And what we've done some testing on is, uh, for instance, uh, we limit the amount of memory that SQL is using. And by doing that and letting us doing using that for caching, and uh, we saw a 60% increase in transaction rates because of that, because we're doing such a much better job of caching. And if you run in that situation, our SEs or our sales rep 
can point you to the Microsoft knowledge base articles on how to limit the amount of memory that SQL uses. Okay. Uh, I, that looks about it, Dan, on the questions. Yeah, that's great questions. Good. Thanks, GQ. Appreciate that. Um, and thanks, everybody, for uh, for hanging in there. And, and be on the lookout not only for the recording of this, but also for the IO assessment tool. And again, you know, we'd love to uh, we'd love to work with you to, you know, even install the software for free in your environment and give it a swirl. So more than happy to do that for you. Uh, Taylor, are you out there to wrap up? I am. Um, thanks, thanks, Dan and GQ, for your time today, and thank you, Shannon, for presenting on KTS. Um, I wanted to thank all of our participants as well for joining us today, and we hope that you found this webcast informative and helpful to you and your organization. If you could take a moment to answer the polling questions on your screen, we would greatly appreciate your feedback on today's webcast. If you have any further questions or would like to request more information, please feel free to contact us. Our contact information is displayed on the screen in front of you, so please don't hesitate to call or email us. And finally, um, in the next day or two, we will be emailing